And before Sean Penn, El Chapo reached out to others to help tell his life story. More than three years ago, the drug lord wanted journalist and writer Diego Fonseca to have a hand in his biography. And Diego is kind enough to join us from Arizona. It's a wild story. Uh, it didn't work out for the two of you, but tell us about what steps were being taken and uh, kind of how secretive all of this was. Uh, give us the lowdown. I'm sorry, Mike, could you repeat that? I, I can barely hear you. Well, I was just saying, it's a wild story how you were contacted and the, and the back and forth. Tell us uh, how, I know it didn't work out, but how did it uh, proceed? Well, the story started in January 2012. My editor contacted me saying that it was this man in Mexico City, he, uh, he was trying to reach her, uh, asking for uh, the publishing house he was working with. To, uh, to try to, to have a, a contract regarding uh, Chapo's memoirs. Uh, she talked about me, and we were talking about it. Uh, I didn't have, I, I didn't want to write Chapo's memoir. I didn't want to be his ghostwriter. Uh, from the very beginning, I told them that I wanted to write my own point of view about uh, Chapo's story. And then we were working, uh, coming and going with SMS uh, during six months until uh, mid-2012, when uh, with the last SMS, this man said that they had to call the potential deal off because, uh, uh, because of security measures, uh, security concerns they had. Uh, we think that, that, we thought that the, the problem was that uh, it was uh, the military or the police uh, pretty close to, to capture uh, El Chapo at that moment. It uh, actually it it took more time to, to, to do that. What was going through your mind during this whole process? Because I know you've got a wife and a, and a, and a little child at the time. Uh, there obviously has to be security concerns doing this sort of thing, but then there's also the thrill of actually telling the story. So what, what was going on in your mind during all of this? Well, the, the first thing is that uh, you feel a little bit of fear. Uh, I was, uh, at that moment, we, we had a, a, a little boy at home, uh, our son with my wife, and uh, we were a little bit afraid. I mean, you, are not, you do not know where, where you are going because they asked me to go to certain airports and to wait for a, a commission of guys to pick me up from the airport and to take me to an uncertain place. And uh, I, I, I should be blind. I mean, I, I couldn't see where, where I was going. I couldn't have my, my cell phone with me, my, my, my computer. Uh, I had to surrender my passport. Uh, and I was about to be for a while with uh, Guzman and his guys um, without knowing what is next for me. So, uh, I mean, uh, when you when you see that the other guy has no rule at all, no rules at, at all, uh, you think that it, I mean you can be nowhere in the hands of the devil, pretty much. So you need to be very careful. In, in one moment, we were thinking about having no not only legal advice but security advice as well. If everything goes uh, to the point that we are going, we were going to have a deal, but finally it, it didn't it didn't occur. Yeah, uh, hands of the devil, that's a nice way of putting it. So you would have been blindfolded. They would have taken everything away. You would have gone to some secret location, undoubtedly a, a lot of his people with weapons around you. So uh, one would assume that Sean Penn went through the same kind of uh, rigor to get the interview. So what was your reaction when you heard that Sean Penn had gotten the interview with El Chapo? Oh, what a lucky guy. I mean, I would like to be Sean Penn, to have the opportunity to be working with Raleigh's son and having an exclusive interview with the, the most important uh, drug lord of these years. Uh, I mean, uh, lucky for him uh, to have that chance. I guess the point is, I'm, I'm not worried uh, about uh, Sean Penn. What, it's, what worries me is uh, what Rolling Stone decided to do, which is handle uh, this interview to two actors. Not, uh, they, they were not uh, trained on journalism or on the technique of the interview. And uh, there were no editor there. There were no reporters there. So uh, to me, it's very, I mean, to me, what concerns me uh, is that having that chance uh, for a very good interview, uh, uh, Rolling Stone decided to the wrong side of the force. I mean, they went to the entertainment side of the force instead of going through journalism. Uh, so to me, I, I, I guess uh, at, at the end, I feel that 
uh, things could be better if someone else with experience in journalism was there, not only an actor, a very well known, very well known actor. Uh, there's a New Yorker a reporter who was also writing about how he was approached as well to uh, tell El Chapo's story. And, and he approached it much the same way you did, you know, wanting to tell the story. And obviously, El Chapo's vanity, he, want, he wanted to kind of spin his own tale. Um, and, and I'm wondering, uh, do you think that that was a big motivation, that his vanity is what stood in the way of him actually doing a, uh, an interview with somebody like yourself or another journalist? Well, yes. Uh, I guess he was trying to control what what uh, people were saying about him. Um, I mean, he was thinking in a big picture of history, history with a capital H. Uh, he was trying to uh, talk about his own legacy for the world. I mean, uh, in a way, I guess he, th he, he thinks, he sees himself as a, a Robin Hood kind of guy, uh, a romantic hero in his little town. Uh, and I guess he wanted to, to the people to know that he was not only a brutal criminal, but only a very good dad, because uh, he treats uh, uh, his uh, daughters very well. And, uh, uh, but I mean, he, he was doing this for a long time. Uh, as far as I know, since 2010, he was trying to reach in different ways, through different people, and with different intentions. First journalists from newspapers, then me and other guys for, for, for a book. Uh, the case uh, right now with, uh, that, that was published today uh, by a journalist from The New Yorker. And finally, he decided that uh, people, does, uh, people do not read but goes to the movies. So he decided to have his own movie and uh, to tell his story to Hollywood. If you had gotten that shot to, to sit down and, and interview him, uh, I'm sure you've molded over in your mind. What were some of the questions you wanted to ask him? Well, it's difficult now because I, I didn't re recap all the the, the the questions I had at, at that moment. I mean, I guess I would start with uh, some very soft questions to go progressively to questions that are going to interest me. I mean, one of the things I want to know is if, if he doesn't feel any contradiction between uh, being a good father at the same time running a business that that running a business that has cost. Uh, uh, death uh, everywhere, and uh, uh, I mean, I, 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 one of the things I am interested in, in, in particularly regarding him, is that he he used to have these two sides, like Dr. Jekyll, uh, that Jekyll and Hyde, uh, one presenting uh, for one side presenting himself as a very good guy, a, a peasant from the hills in Mexico, and the other side being absolutely proud of managing uh, or of being the most important uh, drug lord in, in, in the world. That kind of contradiction, uh, I, I, I would point, I would point my, 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 my main questions initially, I guess, uh, in, in, 